chapter 3 games with sequential moves so let's say there is a strict order in which you know the first player moves and then the second player moves and then the third player moves or there are two players they take turns the first player moves the second player moves when there is a sequence that is strictly followed we can use trees to solve these types of games so let's take an example let's say you're trying to solve for whether today you should smoke or not smoke well your today's action whatever you decide smoke or not smoke will have an impact on your future player's action which is your future self whether they will when you have decided to smoke will want to continue to smoke or will they decide not to smoke now that they have the experience of smoking so as you can see there are two players here your current self and your future self right so your today's self has two outcomes or two possibilities in front of them should I try and gain the experience so that I can say I don't like smoking, I've tried it, or should I not even try? Whatever I do, I have you know, a possibility that if I try, that my future self will have that input from me, correct? But if I don't even try, my future self has no, no input from me, so there's no future self if I don't try. So if I try smoking today, my future self will then have an option to whether to continue or not. So me trying or not trying has given a future self an option to continue or not to continue. So likewise, I'm just given two steps here from the book with this example. Today's self, player one moves that has a dependency uh, to what the player two can do. In this case, your future self is player two. And so when you do this, you have you can draw this combination, right, of what sequence of steps can be followed. Here, we can come up with a payoff. Your future self, when it continues to smoke or stops smoking, when they continue to smoke, they, let's say they get a payoff of positive one. A payoff is the benefit or the utility. And when they stop smoking, they get withdrawal symptoms, so they'll get minus one. Right, so they'll be unhappy. So you know the future self has a payoff of minus one, and uh, when they stop smoking, and a positive one when they start, you know, continue to smoke. Right. So at this decision in black, which is the future self's payoff, is easy to note. Right. Similarly, at this position, we can also tell what is the payoff your current self would have in both of these options, right? What does the current self think about these two options? Forget the future self payoff, and we write them in blue. Today's self would say, hey, no, 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 I get a payoff of minus one when you continue to smoke in the future. I thought you will, you know, be smarter, you'll get the experience and you will stop, so you'd be like, no, no, I get a payoff of minus one. And the today's self, uh, when it, the future self would stop, then they get a payoff of plus one, which makes sense. So the perspective of payoff of today's self and future self is written in blue and black. Yeah? So you can write for a two-step simple game, what is the payoff for this future self and what's the payoff for today's self. These two players, these are the trade-offs and these are the payoffs. Minus one, 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 minus one, correct? So now, so the way you build these games to solve this is you start from the left, the root node, which is this root node and you build out all possible outcomes that actions this person can take, or the strategies, these are all possible strategies, uh, and then find out what is the next player's possible actions, and then add weights. Start with the last node as to what are their payoffs, and then go and induce backwards, like backward induction, which is you look ahead and then say, hey, if this person were to continue or stop smoking this second player, what is my payoff? And then you write those payoffs here. When you do that, you will, similarly, you, you get a payoff of zero um, in this case, right? When you don't even try. Um, so now let's see, how do we solve this, yeah? So once we have given the payoffs at the very root node, uh, from the root node you've started and you've given to all the leaf nodes, sorry, all the payoffs, now let's try to see what will the future self decide. The future self will decide 
that, hey, I'm getting a payoff of one versus minus one, I'm gonna continue smoking. So then what you do is you draw an arrow, which basically says, between these two, this is gonna be the dominant path or the preferred path. So then what happens is, you take that payoff, that this, this step forward, you say, hey, uh, if I'm gonna choose this, I'm gonna bring this payoff matrix in the front. And so what's gonna happen is, you're gonna bring minus one in front, right? Because that's the payoff this person's gonna use from this matrix. It'll be like, okay, today's self is gonna decide, hey, I'm gonna get a minus one or a zero, I prefer a zero. So meaning I'm gonna pick this path. You see, you took, you took just the payoffs that were relevant to this player in this step. And then you decide between minus one and zero, and you say, hey, I'm not even gonna go down this slippery slope, but I know this person will continue to smoke when I give them a try, and so I'm gonna uh, just not even try today, okay? So that's how you can solve for what's the best path for you to take between trying and not trying based on possible things that can happen in the future with these steps in the future, right? So super important. So what you do then is you say, hey, this thing is not even an option, right? So you get rid of this. So this is a very simple example, but as you can imagine, this path is now a dominant path between these two. So you prune this tree, you get rid of this tree because you've like already eliminated it. And then you say, hey, because this not try alone can now lead to 10, 12, 10 or 15 different things in the real life. So you can expand this tree now, right? So you can prune trees, you can transfer payoffs. And the way we did this is through backward induction, which is you look forward and you find out what would happen. And then you reason backwards to say, hey, I, I don't think this is good for me. I'm gonna not even go down this path. So you're able to make better decisions just by finding out what are your payoffs at every step and building this payoff metric. Well, we went through several concepts, so let's just go through them. We look ahead and reason backwards to determine what is the optimal path. We, we draw the optimal path with an arrow. We're able to prune or get rid of those steps that are not gonna be relevant and we build the path of play. In this case, we're gonna go down this path. And we start at terminal nodes to look at all of the payoffs of the leaf nodes, all the payoffs, uh, and then we go backwards and start to get the path. As you can imagine, there is, you know, the today self has an advantage to commit to not trying, right? So this is a commitment, like first mover advantage. Today's self, if they stay strong and not even try, they will have the advantage of actually getting rid of this whole tree from their life. But similarly, the second player, or if you're a second player in any game, you now have the flexibility because you've seen what the first player has done. So first player has an advantage of commitment, but second player has an advantage of flexibility. So there are different games which will have different requirements. Uh, we've gone through this as well in some other videos, which is like Apple, right? They typically, for some of these features, they're really innovative, but for some, they're not. And when, but when they do introduce those new features that when they're not innovative, they do a really good job. So they have a, they use the advantage of flexibility to actually build a second more advantage on their side, right? So, as you can imagine, this was just a two step. There could be so many things you can do to simulate a tree, um, to solve for real life sequential moves. Let's say you're trying to find out what steps should you take now so that you eventually get promoted. Right? That's a that's a sequential move in some sense. You're gonna do some things, you can you can have the choice to be the first player to move. So you could be that person here, right? You could move. And then that work will be watched by let's say your boss, right? And then they can decide to do something, right? And then uh, you could uh, have that work be shown to your boss. And boss could decide to, you know, tell to your skip level, right? let's say. They can decide to talk to the skip level. The skip level can decide a certain things and you know, there's a committee eventually you will be like, yes, promoted or not, right? Similarly, that's one path of play possible sequence a, U, leading to sequence B. There's a possibility of you actually doing such a great work that your colleagues, you know, are recognize you, right? And then that possibility can, can be like leading to your boss noticing some parts. 
and then so on and so forth. Similarly, there could be this third part. You could start to draw this, and then eventually for every player, player one with the sequence, player two, player three, you will have a payoff matrix. P1, P2, P3, in this case, which will eventually lead to certain payoffs for them, which will then be used by this person's payoff, which will then should be used by your payoff. So if you can map out for all of the players involved, what are their payoffs? What are their incentives? What would they choose to do? Because then you would quickly realize that, hey, look, as simple as this, your today's self doesn't agree with your future self's outcome, even though it's, it's you in the future. Similarly, you would quickly realize what moves you need to make, which path you should follow, which path you should not follow. Like, promotion is one aspect, getting fired is another aspect. Like, let's say you find some issue. You could be forthcoming and actually acknowledge the issue and if that's a mistake you did, you, you're better, better off in most cases to acknowledge. But you will be able to solve those paths, choices, and get to those choices which are optimal for you based on the payoffs. So do this as a homework exercise, if you watch this video, which is figure out a sequential move game that you're playing, that you're dealing with. When you do something, someone else looks at it and they get the chance to respond, and then they then you get to respond again, and there's a sequential actions. And what is the payoff that you get at the very end of it? And how are you gonna look forward and look back and actually make better decisions today, right? One can imagine this is this can get very complex very quickly because there could be so many players involved, so many plays involved, with so many players sequentially moving, and there could be so many combinations of this branching that can happen, and this payoff matrix could be super long. So there is complexity, and at some points you will have to you know use pruning where you know hey this path is just not going to happen, um, and you'd have to use educated guesses and ed educated payoffs. Um, and use the knowledge and expertise of some of your seniors. Like let's say you have 15 paths in the path to promotion or path to not getting fired, right? Then you would want to leverage people who are experts who have gone down this path and be like, hey, let me be your river guy. Uh, let me tell you what not to do. And let me tell you where there are bumps. So use knowledge either of others or build your own knowledge and experience and learn from it. And uh, not necessarily you know, you could expect people to be rational, which is one of the big assumptions, right? Being rational. You will quickly realize that, you know, a simple game, like, you know, if I give you $100 and I ask you, split this with someone who's sitting next to you, most likely you'll give them 50 bucks and be like, hey, let's split even if, let's say, it's your friend. Um, and backward induction tells you you should only give them $1 and you should keep 99 But human beings, there's this aspect of fairness, there's this aspect of procrastination, there's this aspect of inaction, there's this aspect of not calculating things correctly. There's lots of issues which uh, deviate away from expecting people to behave rationally at every step. But well, you know, if you don't even think through this, maybe you are actually going down the wrong path. So that's the reason why if we can understand and do some work, to actually find out what are the best options that I have, then you'll be able to explain why certain things happen the way it is. You'll be able to prescribe for yourself better actions to take, and you'll be better off. And you are now much more strategic, and you can solve for those things, which could be really bad for you, right? Like in this case, if you don't even save for 401k in your savings account, which is the default option for some savers, but a very small percentage for most employers, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble because you're not having enough savings, right? Similarly, you could use some of these issues that human brain has to your advantage, right? Uh, we do a lot of hyperbolic discounting where we discount the future much more than what it should be discounted uh, in for the benefit of the present, right? And so there are issues with human brain where for, be, for the better, actually lights up when it sees negative emotions which are around things not being fair or not understanding the magic of compounding really and doing frequent transactions and stock market transactions. So there are lots of issues, but at least we can give it a try. 
where we can take the best options and not even go down certain options that you know didn't make sense if we were to think about it more rationally. Right? Chapter three. Done.